What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at convolutional neural networks with PyTorch and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to start to look at convolutional neural networks. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out my totally free brand new AI newsletter, Displace.ai. This is my new weekly artificial intelligence newsletter, Why Displace.ai, because in the coming years, Artificial intelligence is going to displace millions of jobs and you don't want to be left behind. If you want to learn this stuff? I think this is going to be a great free resource for you. Head over to displace.ai, sign up for the totally free newsletter and check that out. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at convolutional neural networks or CNNs. And in the last few videos, we've been looking at just basic neural networks. If you didn't see those videos, check the playlist in the pinned comment section below. But like I said, it's just very basic neural networks. And now we're going to move into a little bit more sophisticated neural network, the convolutional neural network. And a convolutional neural network, or CNN, is very good at classifying images. So we're going to be using something called the MNIST data set to learn how to do this. And the MNIST data set is a very popular training tool uh, that people use to learn how to use these things. And basically it has numbers from 0 to 9, and they're handwritten. And they're 28 by 28 pixels, and we'll look at them in just a second. And we're going to use those to train our CNN. So very quickly, let's head over to Google and let's just look up neural network. So we've been talking about neural networks in the last few videos, and we've created our own basic neural network. And you'll remember a basic neural network looks like this. We've got our input here, we've got our output over here, and in between we've got neurons that sort of ping pong around and allow our model to learn, right? Very basic, very simple. Well, a convolutional neural network is a lot different. And we could see uh, any of these will work. Maybe this guy. Pop this up. You see, we've got our image here, and then we have these feature maps right here. And that basically finds the border of your image. And we'll look in just a minute how that kind of works on a broad level, right? So you got these feature maps that determines where the borders are. And then you have these pooled feature maps here and here and here. We'll talk about all this stuff going forward. And then it goes and it flattens out all of those sort of border images. It determines where the border is, and then it flattens that out right here. And we'll see why that's important. And then boom, we pop into our neurons and the magic happens and it outputs what it is. In this case, you know, it's Tweety Bird, right? So a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more complicated than just a basic neural network, but really still not that bad. Like I said, we'll get into all this in the next few videos. But right now I want to spend just a few minutes looking at the MNIST data set. And first, let's just look at this thing. If we head over to any of these links here, let's see if I could find, here we go. These are the images that come in the MNIST data set. And these are white digits on a black background. For some reason in my mind, it's white on black, but it really doesn't matter. The concepts are the same. We'll see in just a second. But you can see these are just hand-drawn digits. They're 28 by 28, and they also have a label. So this one is a four. It has a little label that says four. So this is really nice for a data set to have all this information correctly. A lot of times when you have data, it's messy, right? Maybe things don't all have labels. Maybe there's some junk in there. This is a very nice data set, and that's why we use it to learn, because it has all the labels and everything's nice and neat. So you can see we've got 0 through 9, so there's 10 of these things, and you can use those to represent all numbers, of course. So very cool. Now, I want to, let's find a better thing here and kind of talk about what this is and what it's doing here. All right, this is a good one. Uh, let me pull this up here. So basically what we're doing with this network is we're representing these 28 by 28 images in an array. And this is a sort of a 28 by 28 array. This is 14 digits here and 14 digits going down. And all the white here, this is better. Like I said, in my mind, these are white images with black letters. I don't know why it represented it the opposite way on that other page. It really doesn't matter. The concept's the same here. The white is a zero, or if it was black background with white images, the black would be zero, right? So whatever the background is, that's zero, right? And the digit itself, the image, is a shade of black, right? So blackest black is one, right? And you can see there's some ones right here. But along the edges, it's obviously not completely black. And you can't really tell from this one. Let's see if we can find, oh, here we go, right? So you can see it's kind of fuzzy on the edges. It kind of pixelates a little, and that represents something less than one, right? So if we go back to this other image, we could see the numbers here better. So like down here, it's very pixely. So that's a 0.3. That's close to zero. It's it's not quite white, but it's not, it's sort of gray, right? So I should mention these are all grayscale images. So 
but that's kind of important. And you can see right down the middle, we've got a bunch of ones because it's like black, black right down the middle. But as we get to the edges, we have different shades of gray. So 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, the darker the shade, the closer to one, the lighter the shade, like down here, 0 0.3, the closer to zero. So you can see how a computer would very easily be able to figure out where the border of this thing is, where the border of this image is, because everything's a zero, except all of a sudden we've got some numbers here that are greater than zero. So a computer can just take a look at this immediately and go, oh, this is something different right here, right in the middle here, right? And it could figure out where those borders are. That's where the feature mapping stuff comes into play and all that good stuff. So that's basically what our model is going to do. We're going to break these down into ones and zeros and levels of one and zero. So 0 0.3, 0 0.7, whatever. And then the neural network's just going to be able to figure out, hey, these zeros are background. The stuff in the middle is the interesting stuff. And then it can classify it from there by testing and training on the data sets that come with this thing. And I don't remember if I mentioned, but the MNIST data set comes with 60,000 images in the training set and 10,000 images in the testing set. And of course, the we learned from the last batch of videos that a testing set is used to evaluate how well the model sort of performs on unseen data. So uh, that's all that good stuff. So we'll get into this in the next few videos. Like I said, in this video, I just wanted to do a very high level, uh, quick introduction on what a CNN is, sort of what the game is here, you know, changing things into zeros and ones in order to figure out, hey, there's an image in the middle there. We can find the borders from there. We can kind of look at other images that have similar ones and zeros here and use that to kind of figure out what the image is. And it's really kind of just that simple when you think about it from a broad overview. Uh, you know, actually doing it, it's going to take a little bit of coding and stuff, and we'll get into that in the next few videos, but, you know, not too difficult and uh, should be a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video. And sign up for your free newsletter at Displaced.ai. <laughs>